Thanks, Sylvia. Um, bef before I begin, I, I want to um, sort of indulge myself and uh, consider myself a, represent a rep representative of my union, which is the Writers Guild of America. And um, as, you, as you all know, this is a, uh, a national day for your union, for the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, during our long and contentious strike over the winter, uh, I, I can tell you emphatically that writers across the country were extremely moved by the astounding support we got from the Screen Actors Guild. And I remember on every single picket line that I was on in New York, half the picketers were from the Screen Actors Guild. And um, while it didn't necessarily mean we got a, the contract we wanted, it did mean that the studios paid attention, that you were supporting us. And um, I know that every writer greatly appreciated it. On behalf of the Guild, I want to thank you all. Um, sometimes people don't understand, but because it's the movies or television, and it seems that other glamorous world, that we are all working people. We have families, we need health care, we need pensions. And um, our unions were born out of you know, a great deal of fight and a great deal of struggle. And I know that your union is, might be near a time when the struggle is going to happen again. I know things are getting very contentious in LA. And uh, I just want to promise you that I know on behalf of my union that we will support you the way you supported us. Uh, I was, very, I was very struck by something Sylvia said about uh, the, uh, the panel being people who know it all, because the most famous book on screenwriting, which was written by William Goldman, the man who wrote uh, Butch Cassidy, ends with this line, nobody knows nothing. And so I want you to take anything I say, certainly, I'll let the panel speak for themselves with a grain of salt, because nobody knows nothing. It's the whole thing is, uh, comes together in different ways every time. And, uh, for the screenwriter, uh, I want you to sort of think of us as the, uh, you guys are at a party with the director and the crew, and we're the person upstairs banging on the ceiling because you're making too much noise. Because usually the case, the screenwriter feels like the black sheep in the process. We tend to come on the project before anyone's there, when the house is empty. Uh, and I've worked for many years sometimes on a project where it's just myself and the studio executive. But as soon as they decide to green light the project, the door opens and just like in uh, a Marx Brothers movie, a thousand people fall out. And they all suddenly, and some, you know, are on the movie and sometimes they forget you. And uh, with the exception of true auteurs, the directors who write their own screenplays, sort of, you know, like Night Shalaman, who's a Philadelphian, the majority of directors don't, and we have found over the years there's sort of a natural adversarial relationship between directors and writers because we sit and we invent this story and characters and so we think, ah, that's my story, I dreamed it up. Then the director comes on and says, no, 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 it's my story, I'm making it. And it's not always the case, but you, know, you can go back to, uh, there's a wonderful collection of short stories that F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote called the Pat Hobby Stories, H-O-B-Y. It's a wonderful book. If you want to have some beach reading this summer, just you know, get it in paperback. And it's 13 short stories, the last ones you ever wrote about a screenwriter, sort of a hack screenwriter in Hollywood. And the truth of the matter is nothing's changed since he wrote them. Um, but I would like to tell you that I think I've noticed over the years in the, the movies I've worked on that um, it always perplexed me that sometimes actors tend to follow the director's um, path and don't get to know the screenwriter. Um, mostly because, that, look, the director's your boss and, and he's making, making the movie. But I think uh, you'll find that that's an allegiance and an alliance that will do you a lot of good. So uh, as you work on projects, sometimes that screenwriter is that awkward guy standing in the corner who they keep saying, hey, you're in the sight line, would you move over? Um, and I would recommend you speak to them because sometimes that can get you involved in a project before it starts because that's what we do. Uh, screenplays tend to come in three flavors. They come uh, on assignment, which means the studio has a project. 
and they'll call up a screenwriter and say, what's your take on the project? We'll maybe speak to three or four of us. Actually, these days, they'll speak to 30 or 40 of us and uh, hire us. And so we have to write to their vision. Sometimes it happens on spec, which means the screenwriter stays at home in his apartment in Kensington and uh, dreams up this movie and uh, tries to sell it, in which case those glorious moments when he's by himself or she is by herself, the story is really completely theirs. Um, and sometimes they buy material, they buy a book or a magazine, and that actually is one thing that the business has changed dramatically in the past couple of years. With the cost of movies, it is most studio executives want to see that the story existed before, which is why they're doing so many remakes and uh, sequels. They want to have a book because movies are so expensive today, they don't trust their own judgment and they're afraid to go to their bosses and say, I, I read this, I think it should be a, a good movie. So if anything happens to it, their career is on the line. Whereas so they can say, I ah, see a publisher thought the story was good, so I, it's not just me. So I've actually been telling people that one of the best ways to uh, break in as a screenwriter is to write it as a novel first and hold the film rights. Because it's easier to sell a novel to a studio today than it is a spec screenplay. And these are all changes in the marketplace that float around and these are things you have to think about. But what the screenplay is, it's this little magic carpet that uh, an actor, I mean, this just popped on my head. I mean, Vince Vaughn you know, was struggling as an actor and then wrote Swingers for himself. That happens often because it's the one thing you can do that can immediately open the door, which is to create or with a partner or get to know a young screenwriter. If you have a screenplay that immediately, that they want, that immediately moves you in. Sometimes it's very hard to get cast, and you all know that. Sometimes it's even very hard to find out what's being made. But if you, if you create your own project, which is what the screenwriter does, it is literally a skeleton key to get you into any lock, assuming they want it. Um, you, it will also put you through the torturous realization that uh, it's the single most difficult thing, sitting down by yourself and trying to fill up screens, you know, with uh, um, ideas. You know, trying, it's sort of like hurting. Oh, okay, I gotta finish up. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that was 10 minutes, but it shows you what I know. Uh, anyway, uh, bef before, I, before I leave, I just want to say this. Uh, I want to emphasize, as actors, as members of the Actors Union, try and start working relationships with writers. Don't always wait for a director to be the middleman or middlewoman for you. You'll find that it will increase your opportunities. Um, so now I've been asked to introduce a director. Um, and we'll hear his take on how he, once a screenplay has been accepted by the studio, what happens next. So John Rusk. Is a